All right, so the question of the day is, what is a super when it comes to ball python genetics? As a matter of fact, I went to YouTube and did a quick search, and I really didn't see any videos that were specific as far as, you know, telling you exactly what a super is if for ball pythons. And when it comes to genetics, let me tell you, it can get extremely complicated, extremely fast. So I'm gonna to try to really simplify this so you can follow it. Hopefully you'll be able to follow it okay. So essentially what we're talking about is we're talking about uh, genes that are co-dominant and co-dominant genes essentially have you know you can either have one copy of the gene or two copies of the gene when you have two copies you essentially call that a super the super form of that particular gene so for example this snake I have around my neck this is a bamboo ball python has one copy of the bamboo and actually if you breed a bamboo to a bamboo you end up with 25% of the offspring having two copies of the gene and we call those super bamboos and in most, most cases, <laughs> the super is completely different than the regular single gene animal. So for example, you see this one has a bunch of patterns and colors all on it. This is just what we call a bamboo. If you were to see a super bamboo, it is actually a completely white snake with blue eyes. Bobby here is trying to choke me out again. <laughs> so the supers, I would say in most cases, the supers look completely different than the single gene animals. In the case of this particular snake, you get a white snake with blue eyes because it's in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. And that is another topic of discussion, the whole BEL complex. And you can actually mix this with, with some other stuff like the, the Russo or the Lesser, uh, or there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can mix this with the Mojave. They're all in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. You get one copy of the bamboo, one copy of a similar gene in the same complex complex they reside in the same place and they act like a super and it's really uh, a different kind of a level as far as the supers but you know most in most cases I would say for the super form you need two copies of the same gene for example if you have a pastel ball python you have just one gene is like a yellow snake if you have two genes it completely kind of fades out the head it lightens the whole thing and that is a super pastel so the thing you have to think about as far as breeding and supers are concerned, so for example, if I bred this snake, the, this bamboo, to a female, 50% of the babies would come out looking like a bamboo. 50% would come out looking, uh, well, in the case of a normal, they, they would actually be normal looking snakes. If you bred it with something else, you could get some other genes in the mix, but overall, in the whole clutch of eggs, for all the offspring, 50% would contain one copy of the bamboo gene versus if you had a super bamboo. So if you had an all white snake that was a super bamboo, has blue eyes, and you bred it to a normal looking ball python, the normal would have actually 100% uh, bamboo ball pythons which which is kind of interesting and the other thing is is if you have a super and you breed it to another snake you, unless that snake has the, a copy of the same gene you can't get the super again so for example if you had a super bamboo a completely white snake you bred it to a normal looking snake w without the bamboo gene you definitely could not reproduce the white snake which is kind of interesting so I'm gonna show you a couple hatchlings that I have that actually you breed together to get a super. Some of the new stuff that I came out, as a matter of fact, these snakes will be for sale pretty soon. I know you guys have been looking forward to buying some of my snakes. And I have a few hatchlings in the rack that have shed and eaten one meal, and let me show you those snakes. All right, so I kinda wanna demo this snake that I produced the first time this year. This is actually a fire ball python, and the fire gene is a lightener and an enhancer. So you can see that it definitely has a lighter color. It's really bright on the back. And I have a normal right here. This is a, a basically your wild type ball python right here. And you can definitely tell that the fire is completely different. As a matter of fact, if you gave me the fire and didn't really tell me what it was, I'd have a hard time telling this apart from a normal unless you put it side by side with a normal ball python. All right, so take a look at this. I actually have in this hand here, this is a male fire 
over here. And in addition to a male fire, I also have a female fire. So both of these snakes have one copy of the fire gene. As a matter of fact, if you cross these snakes, you bred them together, 25% of the babies would be super fires. And let me tell you, a super fire is a really incredible snake. It also is a white snake, but it's not in the blue-eyed leucista complex, so it won't have the blue eyes, but it'll be an all-white snake with black eyes. All right, so I have a snake that looks pretty close to a super fire, and that is this one right here. So this is kind of as close as I would say that I have to a super. This is not actually a super, it is a blue-eyed leucistic. And the super fire is kind of interesting because it has kind of a faint yellow line right down the back. And this one also has kind of a, a faint line. You'll also see in some super fires they have kind of lighter, uh, bigger splotches of yellow coming down the, the body. Some of them just have a little bit of yellow like this one. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera. This one it almost seems like it's faded out a little bit. I think this one's kind of going into shed. But this is kind of what a super fire looks like, except this snake has blue eyes. And this is this this happens to be a lesser bamboo. So this acts like a super. It's in the blue-eyed leucista complex, but it's not a super. But if you made a super fire, it'd look exactly like this, and it would have black eyes instead of blue eyes. And if you can see the blue eyes on this girl. This 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 is actually a boy here. I actually I had a boy and a girl at the show and I sold the girl. <laughs> and I was kind of I, I was kind of on the fence whether to keep them both or not, but you know, I ended up with this one. So this one was was actually actually to me this is actually a better deal for me the 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 male blue-eyed leucistic. So if you had a male super fire and you bred this to a normal all the babies would come out fire. They would all have the fire gene. If you bred it to something, you know, like a like a lemon blast, which is a pastel pinstripe, then you'd get pastel fires, you'd get uh, pinstripe fires, you'd get pastel pinstripe fires. <laughs> Everything would have fires, and you'd have, and you'd get regular fires, and you'd, the, the powerful thing about supers is you get no normals, which is really powerful as a breeder. And some people really love them, and some people, don't because if you have like a like a super fire and you're breeding it to all your snakes then essentially you don't have anything without fire it kind of you know runs through your whole collection you end up with a whole bunch of fire and sometimes you want like a whole variety of stuff you don't necessarily want that gene from the super in all your snakes and i've seen some people kind of complain you know I, I really don't want a super pastel because i don't want pastel in all my babies and they kind of want a whole mix of different things which I find is kind of interesting that you wouldn't want, you know, the, the, the specific gene through your whole thing. And this one actually being a bamboo lesser, it acts like a super. So when I breed this, half the babies will come out bamboo, half the babies will come out lesser. And the interesting thing about this is when you breed this, uh, it only gives one gene or the other to the offspring. It won't give both. So you never get the white snake if you breed this to a normal. You'll never get the bamboo lesser back out of this. Well, essentially what you do is you have to breed this to get your bamboo and then breed the bamboo back to this to get your super bamboos or your bamboo lessers. All right, so here's where it gets a little bit complicated. <laughs> Take a look at this snake. This is a fire pied. So this is the fire gene in it and it's also a pied. So the pied is actually recessive and the fire is co-dominant. So it's kind of a mix of both. This has two copies of the pi gene, which is recessive, one copy of the fire. So the fire essentially lightens the little splotches right here. If this didn't have fire in it, these would be really dark like a regular pine. And the funny thing is, is those fires that I have were came from this male bred to another female. So what they are is they are 100% het pine. And the interesting thing is, is you can almost think about uh, recessive as uh, you really can't see the, the one single gene coming out of a recessive. So you don't really know, you know, if I handed you those fires, you couldn't tell if it actually was 
uh, if it actually had the pie gene in there or not. And the only way I know 100% sure, that's why they're 100% head pied, is because I know that this was the male and I bred it with that female and I know 100% that they have one copy of the pie gene. So when we're talking about supers, we're, we can't really uh, we can't really relate the same terminology to recessive morphs because we're talking uh, it's it's almost the same thing but it's a completely different term we're, we're talking about hetero, heterozygous one copy of the gene instead of uh, just a single copy of like the fire gene two copies of recessive is the visual so this visual has two copies of the gene and you breed it to something else and it only has one, all the babies look like normals because you can't really tell if it has the pie gene or not. It gets a little bit complicated. And then if we jump into dominant, so dominant is a little bit different than co-dominant because for some reason, dominant mutations, dominant morphs, they don't have a super form. And we can't quite figure out why in some cases that we can't get a super form. A lot of people are saying, uh, you know, there's a possibility that if you had two copies of the gene, it's a lethal combo for, for some of this, like the pinstripe or the spider, uh, some of these like the champagne. Sometimes I've seen people make super champagnes, but a lot of times they, they die really young or they have severe genetic anomalies. So a lot of these we consider dominant mutations and it's typically only co-dominant if we can actually produce viable supers on a regular basis. All right, so this snake that I have around my neck right here, this is a coral glow ball python. And the interesting thing about coral glows is that the super form looks almost exactly like the single gene animal. As a matter of fact, I've seen a lot of people breeding coral glow to coral glow and they get a whole clutch of babies. They're taking pictures of it and posting them on reptile forums saying, hey, I don't know which ones are the single gene and which ones are the super coral glows. And let me tell you, I've looked at some on the internet and I can't tell the difference myself there's got to be a way to tell the difference because some people can and I just haven't really spent a lot of time you know trying to figure it out and really for me kind of the the, the hurdle for producing the coral glow is getting a female and for some reason, the, the males and females are linked to a particular uh, spot on the gene. So, for example, this one, is, this one is a male maker. So when I breed this to a normal, all the coral glows that come out of that, hash, that uh, clutch of eggs, they're all males. As a matter of fact, last year I think I produced maybe 15 coral glows and every single one was a male. I was really hoping for a female because then I could hold it back, grow it up and cross the coral glow to a coral glow and actually get the super coral glows. So here's another snake that's kind of interesting. This is another completely white snake. This has no yellow in it at all. It's completely bright, bright white. And this one happens to be a spider pied and a lot of people a lot of people especially novices what they'll do is they'll buy a white snake especially the blue-eyed lucies or something like that and they're sold as what they call a bell a blue-eyed lucy or a blue-eyed leucistic and a lot of people don't know the, the genetics in their blue-eyed leucistic which is kind of interesting and people actually have come up to me at the reptile shows and I'm like hey what kind of a snake do you got there and there's it's like oh that's it's a blue-eyed leucistic and I was like oh that's pretty cool so what genes are in that snake and they're like well I don't really know what genes are in there so if you have a blue-eyed leucistic it could be a super bamboo it could be a super lesser it could be a super Mojave super Russo it could be a lot of different things or you know in the case of, of certain ones I actually have a white snake with blue eyes that is a lesser pied which is kind of interesting and this one actually happens to be a spider pied so it can kind of trick you if you're just buying a, a, a blue-eyed leucistic I would definitely recommend figuring out from the breeder what the pairing was so you know the genes in your snake all right so if you were to ask me if I like working with supers in my collection as far as breeders I would probably say I don't really like to use supers as breeders I like to produce the supers because they they're kind of unique and people are looking for them and they bring in a little more money but I don't really like to use them in my collection as breeders 
because really the whole clutch of eggs has that particular gene in. And what I would actually prefer using is something like the Bamboo Lesser, which has one copy of the Bamboo, one copy of the Lesser, and acts like a super. So half your babies are Bamboo, <laughs> half the babies are Lesser. And that way you kind of get a variety of hatchlings. <laughs> Look at this guy up on top of my head. This crazy snake. <laughs> anyway, I don't know what this guy's doing. I think it's because he's going into shed. He's like ready to shed. I probably shouldn't be kind of messing with him because he's kind of getting squirrely up here. But, you know, as far as, you know, I'm concerned, especially, you know, as I kind of scale up a little bit, I don't really want clutch after clutch after clutch of entirely, you know, everything with bamboos if I had a super bamboo or lessers if I had a super lesser. I kind of like to mix it up. So, for example, if you had, you know, like a four gene animal with a two gene animal and you get a whole rainbow of colors and you had something like pastel in there, then you're kind of, you know, in instead of everything being a whole rainbow of all different stuff you get everything with pastel combos in everything and some people like it and it might bring a little more money some people don't because you know it kind of uh, you know pretty soon your whole collection has all pastel in everything or bamboo or something like that so I kind of you know stay away from the supers as far as breeders but they are powerful breeders as far as kind of a return on investment I would say that's it's really good to have them so that is it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.